Our Father, we thank you for how you have continued with us at the retreat. We pray that today again you speak with us and deal with us in Jesus' name. Amen. We're asking that you help all of us who are here to hear the word from the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Be with us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have these words concerning our devotion, our desire, our disposition, dedication, determination, discipline, decisions, disappointments, discouragement, diligence, dieting, doctors, degree or decree, and our duty. On devotion, if we do not come apart, we will come apart. Devotional life, like muscle, develops with exercise. What it means is that if you do not come apart, come away from the people, rest a while, pray for some time, have a worker's retreat like this, the tendency is that will so work to the point you are tired and your joints will come apart and your personality will fall apart and the work itself will come apart and the unity will be destroyed. There will be division as the body falls apart. So it is very necessary that once in a while we come together like this. Unfortunately, I see that a lot of people who have not seen the importance of a workers' retreat like this, and they have not done everything they ought to do to be here. The desire, do not pray for easy lives. There are many people that desire to live an easy life. All we need to pray for is to be stronger men and women. Do not pray for task equal to your powers. That is, do not look at your strength and say, Lord, don't give me any work beyond my strength. Don't pray like that. Tell God to give you powers equal to your task. Let him determine what you are supposed to do. And let him give you the strength, the power, the wisdom, all that is necessary equal to the task he has given you disposition all the world is a camera look pleasant please that is people are looking at you as if they are focusing the camera on you everywhere you go everywhere you turn always act as if you are posing before a camera a kind disposition wins friends everywhere in whatever area of work you are given to do if you have a nice disposition, a nice attitude, a gentle approach, you will find that many people will be drawn to you like nails are drawn to the magnet. Dedication. David Livingstone wrote in his diary, I have found that I have no usual endowment of intellect, but I this day resolved that I will be an uncommon Christian. He said, it is not that he has great strength or great endowment or great ability. All that he strives to do is that he wants to be an uncommon Christian. That means he wants to be a person that is doing his best, that you will not find him a mediocre among the common people. He will be special. Determination. When it is definitely settled that a thing cannot be done, watch someone do it. It means when people have said, this thing is impossible, nobody can do it. The only person that will do it is a person that has determination. Watch someone who will volunteer to do the thing that seems impossible. Discipline. It is a sword that cuts and prunes for better productivity. 
Many people do not understand what discipline is all about. Self-discipline. That you have a good, firm control on yourself. Controlling and disciplining every area of your life. From your family life to your public life. Private life to the public life. That discipline, it's a sword. It cuts and prunes for better productivity. You t use it sparingly on others. Use it heavily on yourself. That is, discipline yourself more than you discipline other people. Decisions. History is made whenever you make a decision. There is no more miserable man than one in whom nothing is habitual but indecision. A man who never can take a decision. Always undecided. He has a habit and a problem of indecision. He doesn't know what to do, when to do it. He says he'll be a miserable man. Because with his indecision, he's writing history, an history book about himself that he will not like his children to read. Disappointment. Some of us do not believe we are having a good time unless we're doing something we cannot afford. There are people that are always doing things they cannot afford to do. Things that are not important for them to do. Things that will ruin their lives. And they feel disappointed if they don't do what their flesh or selfish ambitions want them to do. And then they get so easily discouraged. You can tell how big a man is by observing how much it takes to discourage him. If little things discourage you, you think of the kind of man or woman you are. But if you are never discouraged, you always try to find solution for whatever problem. Personal problem, mental problem. I don't mean that you are insane, but you have a low mental capacity. And yet, you are not discouraged by that. Or it may be a financial problem, a family problem, a problem in the ministry that God has placed in your hand. If you are not a person that is easily discouraged, then it shows how great you are in the kingdom of God. Diligence. There aren't any hard and fast rules for getting ahead in this life. Just hard ones. Hard rules. And you have to be persistent. Because it is by persistence that the snail reached the ark. You know, the snail is very slow. And yet we're told that Noah brought all those animals into the ark. It must have been by real persistence that the snail eventually reached the ark. If the snail can reach its destination, its place of safety, can you be slower than the snail? Persist. Be steadfast. Continue. Be diligent. And you will reach the goal that the Lord has marked before you. Dieting. Want to kill your husband and get away with it? Don't bother with blunt instruments or revolvers. Just feed him a steady diet of rich pastries and heavy starches until he's at least 15 or 25 percent overweight. He will die quicker. You want to kill a man? Feed him too much. Make him overweight. You want to kill your wife? Feed her so much that she becomes 25% overweight. A normal weight. A weight that is suitable for our height or for our constitution in the body. The fatter you become, the quicker you die. That's why it's very, very important that as children of God who want to live long, you must be able to control what you take in. It is not smoking alone that destroys a person. It is not drinking alone that destroys your health or your body. Too much starch, carbohydrate, and too much food can destroy. 
that at the age of 25, you cannot uh, carry your body. You need uh, a wheelchair to carry you along, even though you are not lame, but you are too big. Cut down on your weight. A woman's fondest wish is to be weighed and found wanting. What that means is that a woman that understands the relationship between your constitution in the body and your health doesn't want to reach the maximum weight that she can reach. And um, I think the women representatives ought to look at this in a scientific way in one of their meetings. That with your height, there is a kind of weight or there is a limit to the weight you ought to have. Never reach that weight. The weight and found wanting in that area. Otherwise, you create health problems for yourself. Number 12, doctors. Doctors are neither God nor Satan. One has to be in the middle of the way. And as Christians, we ought to understand, we do not make doctors our God. On the other hand, we do not look at doctors as if they were Satan. There are some denominations that will look at doctors like Satan. Other denominations look like doctors as they are God. Any problem in health they have, they cannot pray. They do not even look up to God at all. All they will be thinking about is the doctor. They take the doctor as God. The other extreme is that there are denominations that take doctors as Satan. If they have any problem, even if they are dying, and their prayer and faith cannot carry them through, they will never go to the doctor because they feel that the doctor is synonymous with Satan. But you stay in the middle. Don't make the doctor God. Don't make the doctor Satan. Do not depend on the doctor as if he were God. On the other hand, you should not avoid him, the doctor, as if he were Satan. That's a balanced approach. 13. Degree or decree. By secular degree, modern preachers remain largely ineffective and defeated. You see, there are many people, all they are thinking about is that they will have a university degree. Whether degree in the sciences or social sciences, or degree in theology, or degree from a seminary. And by their degrees, they are ineffective and defeated. Sometimes you find in a church that they have a pastor who is not a university graduate. A pastor who has the spirit of God, who has the love of the people, who has dedication and commitment, who is addicted to the world, and he has been carrying them on. Eventually, some of the, in those churches where the board of elders decide the movement of the church and the direction or the leadership is not in the hand of their pastor. So the board of elders will discuss and say, well, we know that this, our pastor is effective. We know that he is anointed. We know that he has, uh, you know, something good. But it's enough time now we have a graduate. A person that has graduated from seminary, from Bible college. And then they will tell that man to maybe find another church or transfer him to a village um, congregation where they do not need a degree holder, then they will bring in the American degree holder. He knows English, but he doesn't know the people. He can read, but he cannot pray. He can preach, but he doesn't know how to counsel the people to be able to solve their problems. He loves money more than he loves the people. And he's living a modern day life. He transports all his style of living in America where he did his seminary schooling into the community where he is. Before you find what is happening, that church will die. Many people kill and destroy the churches by their degree. But it is not degree we need. It is spiritual decree of the Bible day preachers that will make us effective and dynamic. So if you have been thinking... Maybe I'm not effective because as a house fellowship leader, I don't have a degree. Maybe I will not be able to make any progress because I do not have a degree. 
forget it. Think about all the people in the Bible days. Where's a few of them who are well educated? Like Moses, he was mighty in words and deeds. Like Paul the Apostle, he was well educated. But think about the rest of the people. Think about David. He wasn't too much educated. He was brought from the sheepfold. And yet, he was a better king than Saul, the first king. Think about Joshua. You know, in, for Joshua, he, was, um, he developed at the time the slavery in Egypt was so much. And then eventually, all he did is that he went to the mountain top. Going to the mountain top is more important than going to university. And he got the power of God upon his life. He led those people. Think about Elisha. He was a farmer. And Elijah came to him while he was on the farm. And he had this call. He was a mighty man of valor. He did something great for the Lord. And think about Peter. He was a fisherman. And think about Andrew, James, John, and the rest of the apostles. Apart from Matthew, who was a tax collector. Who must have been doing some arithmetic to be able to calculate the money that he got. Uh, he must have been more educated than Peter and the rest of the people. But you can see that he was uh, not known as much as Peter, as much as John, as much as Andrew, and as much as James. The only one, according to history, we are told, is uh, the most educated among them all is Judas Iscariot. And he is the one that got into trouble. It is not degree. It is your faith and your faithfulness that will bring fruitfulness in your life. You know, sometimes we have some people running about. They want to go to a seminary. They want to do this and do that. A brother who testified last night. You remember the brother, the uh, ex Jerry Coyle man? Uh, he doesn't have Jerry Coyle now. Beautiful, good brother. But you know, uh, after he had given his life to the Lord in 1986, some Europeans uh, came or Americans came early this year according to his testimony and they were telling him they will send him overseas and when they send him overseas, you know what you'll get in overseas? Certificate. That's all you get there. Degree. But when you come back, they will take the spirit of God, the power of God, the assurance, the ability that you have and they put paper in your hand. And then you put it in the glass. You put it on the side of your wall. You say, I have lost the spirit, but I have certificate. And when you have lost the spirit of God, and all you have is certificate, the people that are under you woe unto them. They better run away from you. But if you don't have degree, but there is a decree in your mouth, that whatsoever you will decree, it shall be done in Jesus' name. And then... We must face our duty. He who is false to present duty breaks a thread in the loom and will find the flaw when he may have forgotten the cause. You see, those who weave clothes, the native people, if there is a particular thread in the loom that has been broken and they did not take note of it, when they have finished everything they are doing, they will find a flaw in the clothes that they have made, although they might have forgotten the cause. If you forget some present duty, it is like that broken thread. And you may find at the end of the day, there is a flaw in the work that you are doing. So, let's keep to our duty. He that labors is tempted by one devil. He that is idle by a thousand devils. A person that is laboring, the devil may tempt him to be saying, stop, don't continue, this is too much for you. But you see, those who do not labor at all, thousand devils and demons are after them, wanting to destroy them. Do not be idle. Don't allow the devil to destroy you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Keep seated. Pray and meditate on all that I told you. What's your devotional life like? 
your desires, your disposition, your attitude. How dedicated are you? Are you striving to be an uncommon Christian? Are you determined when people say something can't be done? Do you volunteer to do it? Do you apply discipline on yourself? Do you take decisions in the direction of duty? How do you react to disappointments? Are you easily discouraged? Are you as diligent and persistent as a snail? You keep on moving, even though you may be slow. Keep on reading the Bible, even though you may not gain much at a time. Keep on praying, even though mighty answers do not come instantaneously. Are you watching your diet? Or do you pick up everything you see on the table and put in your mouth? Do you exercise to keep your body in shape? Overweight is as deadly as smoking and drinking. Do you take doctors as God? Or do you react to doctors as Satan? Be in the middle of the way. Are you forsaking the work? Trying to look for a degree? Do you think it's university degree, seminary degree that builds a church? Or are you a child of God with the decree of faith in your mouth? Are you committed to duty and you do not neglect the daily duty that God has placed upon your shoulders in Jesus?